Matt here with Mobile Solar Consulting. Today we're gonna do a little tutorial of how to cut, strip, and crimp all sorts of different connectors and ferrules onto wires. Um, we're gonna be showing you all the tools that we use, at least the affordable ones. There's gonna be links in the description as to where to get the tools on Amazon and the wires and ferrules and connectors on our website. So let's get started. First, we're gonna be cutting and stripping wire. Then we'll do the solar connectors. Then we'll do the ring terminals and butt connectors. Lastly, we'll do all sorts of different ferrules. Those are required in some cases, but always recommended for Victron energy equipment. So let's start with how to cut and strip wires. We're today gonna to be looking at 18 to two gauge wire. That range, you know, you can cut any of those with this eye crimp wire cutter or cable cutter is the proper term. This is about 10 bucks on Amazon and it can also strip wire pretty well. So if we're gonna cut this two gauge. First, I'm gonna strip it and I'm, I'm not digging in too far. I don't wanna damage the strands. Once I've dug in a little bit, I'm just gonna pry, pry off. Look at that, zero strands damaged in that process. And if we wanna cut it, again, up to two gauge wire with this, cuts like butter, very sharp. Now, if we wanna strip wire that's a little smaller, we don't wanna use this to strip an 18 gauge wire because we're definitely gonna damage some of the strands on this tiny little wire. So instead, I'm going to use this from Klein Tools, the automatic wire stripper, insert a little bit and pull the trigger. And just like that, we've stripped a little bit. Now, if you wanna strip more, you're just gonna push in right here, get that guard out of the way and strip a little more. So as far as cutting and stripping goes, that pretty much covers it. So moving on, let's talk about how to crimp solar cables. So these are called MC4s. The first thing you're gonna do is get your PV wire. Now this is a double insulated wire. So it's got two layers of insulation around the tinned copper cable. First, I'm going to strip a bit of wire And you might be asking why I'm not stripping with this. It's just too thick with the double insulation to fit in here. All right, so we only need to strip enough length for the barrel of the connector. So I've actually stripped too much here. It only needs to go to right here where my fingernail is. So I'm actually gonna cut off about half of this. And that looks perfect. So next I'm gonna take my solar crimping tool. This is also from iCrimp. I think this is actually comes in a kit with these two together, probably something like 30 or 40 bucks. And I'm gonna put my solar connector just gently, just very gently holding it with the crimper. I'm gonna slip my wire in just like that. Pull the trigger, give it a tug. It's on there nice and snug. And you'll notice there's two different pins. So on that crimp, I used a male style pin that's going to get reversed and now we'll use a female style connector. Push it in until you hear that click. Now it's set in place, it's not coming out and you screw down the waterproof portion of the connector and you're done. This is the male style connector with the female style pin. So if we wanted to make a matching cable we would do the same thing with the opposite pieces here. 
now let's show you how to crimp heat shrink connectors such as butt crimps or ring terminals. So first we're going to take our wire. I'm gonna start with the 18 gauge. I've got a little bit stripped. I'm going to slip the connector on and you should have just enough wire to where you can see it poking out the top side of the heat shrink area. Right, so right there. Now I'm going to take my crimpers. These are from WireFi and they've got a nice smooth die here. So it's not going to cut up the heat shrink. So now um, I've got a red connector here and there is a red dot on the smallest portion of the crimper. So that's what I'm gonna use. Stick it in there. That looks really good. Give it a tug, it's not going anywhere. So next we would just use a heat gun and heat shrink this. So same thing would go for our 10 gauge wire here. Strip a bit off, really don't need to strip very much. That's already more than enough. Slip our butt crimp over top. And now we're gonna use the yellow portion of the die. So if you ever get to this point and you feel like you can't force the crimper any further, which I don't feel like that now, but just to give you a demonstration, you can slip um, a screwdriver or something into this little portion here, and the little lever, and cause it to release and get your connector back out. It's nice and snug. Again, don't forget to heat shrink it. The heat shrink on the connector will just give you another layer of protection. So if your crimp down the road comes loose, you still have that heat shrink kind of holding it together. It also acts as strain relief. So the connection on the wire isn't responsible necessarily for holding the wire, the weight of the wire in place. If the wire is hanging like this, then the glue from the heat shrink is carrying the weight of the wire and that way the electrical connection can just do its job. So that's about it for um, heat shrink connectors. This blue color is for 14 to 16 gauge. We don't have any of that wire here today, so we're just gonna move on. Now what we get a million questions on is ferrules. A lot of Victron components require ferrules, and some of them require a specific crimper as well. So let's get into it. First, we're gonna start small with an 18 gauge wire. Just gonna strip a bit. And that actually wasn't enough. Strip a little more. All right, and we use a ferrule here with, I believe this is a, 12 millimeter pin, twist the wire and just slide the ferrule right over top. Now this, this one crimper is gonna work for anything from 18 gauge to six gauge. So this is an awesome crimper, but notice this is a hexagonal shape. So just keep that in mind for now, that will work for most items, but there's some items like the, uh, the older you know, 30 amp Orion TR smart chargers, they're gonna want a square shaped crimp. So you'd want something like this. So let's just start out with this crimper, nice and easy. Give it a tug, it's feeling good. Uh, there's also a screw here. So if you are not feeling like your crimper is you know, using enough force, you can increase the tension on the spring in here by loosening the screw and spinning the little dial here and then retightening the screw. And these are, again, these are from iCrimp, very affordable on Amazon. Let's move on to the 10 gauge wire here, the standard 10 gauge, not the 10 gauge PV wire. First, just going to strip a little bit. Oh, I stripped a, maybe a lot. Trim that up. 
once we put the ferrule on. So if you're installing a MultiPlus uh, inverter, a MultiPlus 2 specifically, there is a lever style connector that requires you to use ferrules and you'll want an 18 millimeter pin on your ferrules. You'll also wanna make sure they are uninsulated, meaning there's no insulative cap on the bottom of the ferrule that will not allow you to shove the connector far enough, far enough into the MultiPlus to actually make a good contact. So again, for MultiPlus inverters, you want an 18 millimeter pin length, non-insulated ferrule. You can get all the ferrules you need on our website. So I'm gonna slide this over the wire and I'm gonna just push it all the way down, trim the excess and give it a nice crimp here. So you'll notice the ferrule is a little longer than my crimper, so that's fine. I'm just gonna move it and make another crimp. It looks beautiful. Give it a tug, it's not going anywhere. That's a good connection. So let's move up to a solar wire here. So again, this is the double insulated PV wire. I'm going to strip some. And you'll want a ferrule with a wide cap on the bottom. This is a 10 gauge, 12 millimeter pin insulated ferrule with a wide cap. The reason you want this one is because the insulation is so thick that a normal ferrule just would not fit over the insulation. So it would stop right here if you ordered a normal ferrule. But we want it to slip over top of the insulation. Gonna give it a crimp here. Oh, that didn't work out too well. Let's try it again. So again, this is where I'd probably increase the tension. Uh, I actually will go ahead and increase the tension on my crimper. I'm gonna go ahead and try it again. Much more sturdy. And that's a good connection there. All right, now let's move on to the six gauge wire. So if you ever wanna know how much to strip, you can always stick the ferrule up next to your thumb. Kind of give it a little mark with your fingernail. And now you know where to put your tool to strip the wire. So now we have two choices of ferrules for six gauge wire. We have our 18 millimeter pin uninsulated ferrule and our 18 millimeter pin insulated ferrule. We would use this on anything except for the inverter wires. On the inverter wires, you need the uninsulated connector, again, to shove that far enough up into the MultiPlus so that it gets uh, a good connection. Same crimper here. I'm gonna trim off the excess. Looks good, nice and sturdy. So same process <clears throat> if we were using the insulated ferrule, it's really the exact same thing. If you get to where you're working on uh, Orion TR Smart, for example, or maybe uh, a Smart Solar MPPT, and you need a square crimped ferrule, because some of these pieces of equipment like the Orion and certain charge controllers, they will only fit a maximum of six gauge wire. And then once you put a ferrule on it, it's a little larger even, so it barely fits. And you wanna match the square shape of the terminal so you can use this. This is from Pro's Kit, uh, CP336F. So we're gonna slip the ferrule in, crimp it down, and I'm actually gonna flip it over and crimp the other side as well. And now we've got a decently square shaped ferrule. Now, if this isn't perfectly squared off for you, you can always take some needle nose pliers and kinda, you know, mangle it into the right shape, but usually this gets the job done. All right, now for the largest ferrule that we use here at our shop, in most cases, is the two gauge. So we're gonna strip, this is a, I think that's a 24 millimeter pin, it's quite long. I'm gonna strip quite a bit of wire off here. Let's 
slip the ferrule over top. And again, we're using the Pros Kit crimper. The two gauge fits in the largest slot here in the middle. That's one. We're gonna flip it over, crimp it one more time. And the ferrule's a little longer than my crimper, so I'm actually gonna move it down and do it again. Now my ferrule is a little longer than the wire that I stripped. Snipping off the end and look at that. Very nice connection there. So ferrules, really their main purpose is to prevent wires from fraying. So as you push the wire into a connector, it doesn't have strands that go off to each side and short to another wire nearby. But they also make everything a whole lot sturdier in terms of using a screw style connector on a ferrule connection rather than stranded wire. And they make it look neater. So we hope you found this video helpful on the different tools and wire ferrules and connectors that we use here at our shop. And uh, if we can be of assistance to you, feel free to reach out.